So this is the Starfish, and it is one of my absolute favorite go-to exercises slash stretches for the whole body, uh, especially for the torso. Um, this stretch has been instrumental in getting my ribs and thoracic spine and all the soft tissue around them to regain mobility after having been kind of rigidified for a number of years. So it's basically you doing one side and then the other side. Um, and it can be as brief or as long as you want. Um, sometimes I'll do a real quick one minute on each side and that gets things loosened up. Other times I've got the time and might spend, you know, 10 minutes on each side. Sometimes one of the real uh, benefits to it is it's, it's a systems check. Um, most of the things I do, I like having kind of a systems check involved. And so the first time or two, I might go through this just to kind of assess the relative tensions. Um, and then when I find places that need more attention, I'll sink in deeper. But the basic idea when you're laying on one side is to elongate from hand to foot or from elbow to knee or possibly just from hip to shoulder. Um, the legs and arm are for counterbalance of each other. So they're going to basically be doing opposite the whole time. So here my right arm and right leg are twisting in opposite directions. And I find it beneficial to carry that through even with the rotation. So if one rotates, the other one's going to rotate in the opposite direction to kind of help wring out all the tissues. That idea of wringing out the tissues is a, a kind of fundamental to this exercise. So I'm elongating here through the left side, trying to carry that strain or feel the strain definitely from the hip to the shoulder or armpit possibly to the elbow and knee, possibly even to the hand and foot. Here I'm anchoring under a door with my hand to get a better stretch and better leverage. So one of the fundamental ideas is using the hand and arm to counterbalance each other. So they're essentially in a straight line, although not rigidly so. You may want to flex and extend the spine a little bit. Um, you definitely want to pull th rotation through the thoracic spine and ribs. Really more through the ribs. It's best not to feel it in the spine itself, but... Uh, it's okay to feel a little some in the thoracic, but really you were looking to feel it through the soft tissue, through the ribs, through the intercostals, getting the ribs mobilized against each other. Ribs should be able to move individually, um, like an accordion. Uh, it's connected movement. They only move a little bit, but they should each be able to move a little bit against their neighbor. When we are rotating, it's really important that we don't want to feel or put stress through the lumbar spine. Um, it's good to feel it in the soft tissue around the lumbar. Uh, if you get a stretch for your quadratus lumborum or for your obliques or anything down there, that's great. Keep it in the soft tissue. Do You do not want to feel rotation through the lumbar vertebrae. Um, so if you feel anything right in the spine down there, um, it's a you want to puzzle how to change that. Uh, often it's about just keeping enough tension through the abdo abdomen and the abdominal muscles that that's where the strain goes.
So now let's look at the same thing from the side. So again, step one is just elongating through the side with slight contraction in the abdominal muscles and pull in the strain. Once you feel the strain connect through the side line body, then start inducing rotation. You may um, do some flexion extension, but you rotate the shoulder. If the shoulder goes towards the ground, the leg goes behind and vice versa. When the shoulder falls back, the leg comes out in front. They're counterbalancing and counter straining each other. So as that left shoulder goes back, left leg comes forward, feeling rotational force through the soft tissue, not through the spine, um, especially not the lumbar spine. Definitely want to feel it through the abdomen, might feel it in the hip, want to feel it through the ribs. And these are things uh, to get to know and also to play with. You're going to feel it in certain areas first, and then as you do it, A, it'll open up, and then B, you are in control of the tension regulation. So if you only feel it in one area, see if you can change the tension slightly through your body to feel it farther down or up that same line. So this gets some really nice kind of diagonal and spiral lines of, of force through the body. Um, it's very valuable for getting the ribs moving. A lot of people's ribs don't move. My ribs didn't move for a long time. Um, it was, I, I'd lost a lot of mobility through my ribs and thoracic spine due to some misunderstandings that I had. And so this has been a, a key player in opening that up. And one of the reasons that's very important is because that is how we dissipate strain, a rotational strain that goes through the spine. We don't want our lumbar to have to rotate. They're not well designed for rotation. Um, so when rotational force goes through the spine, we want to make sure that the thoracic spine and the ribs and all the soft tissue can dissipate that force. So this is an especially good exercise and stretch for getting rotational movement through the spine and ribs. Um, so again, the general principle is you're pulling tension through the side, we pull a slack out of one direction, and then we make micro movements and then big movements in other directions. So we keep the tension through the side, and then we rotate and we add flexion and extension in there at will. This is a very useful for self-diagnostics, self-assessment, um, and also therapeutics. So here's showing the same thing. Uh, you don't have to grab your hand like I'm doing, but it helps to pull traction. It'll help to create the feeling, uh, so it's worth experimenting with. Sometimes I do it, sometimes I don't. It's useful. So here we're making micro movements, pulled pull the slack out of the side, doing some little rotations, just warming things up, back and forth. Arm and leg are counterbalancing, and little by little that range of motion keeps expanding. That bottom leg is bent just to put slack in the hip, uh, keep some stress off the SI joint. Um, you just do what's comfortable. So here I'm, I'm ex accentuating the rotation, doing some variations, getting more hip rotation involved as well. Keeping, mostly keeping an extension um, in the lumbar spine. Uh, it's worth playing with some flexion and an extension, but extension is the safer position. So if there's any back issues, really make sure you get to know extension. So here I flipped backwards so you get a different perspective. Notice I'm keeping the waist elevated. I've got some, you can see the extension in my spine there. I'm, so I'm rotating my ribs with a, keeping a lumbar curve in there. 
And so by pulling the slack out of one direction and then creating movement in the other directions, we create differential movement. Another variation with the hips. I use that bottom foot sometimes to push against the knee. Uh, that helps pull the strain into the psoas and get a psoas stretch as well. And just feeling for stuck areas and getting them moving. More variations with the hips. There's a lot of places you can go from here, but the rotating back and forth, there's that leg on the knee that I was talking about. You can put an arm behind, getting a shoulder girdle and pectoral stretch that way. We're starting, starting to depart a little bit from what we would call the starfish, but once you're down, while you're down there, might as well explore what else you can do. So once more for the people in the back, got a sky bird's eye view here, and that arm and leg are primarily counterbalancing. So you notice as I rotate forward and backward, the body starts going off at a diagonal. So that's just how it works. <laughs> Nothing to try to force. But be cool with that. Notice that the, the torso is actually covering a fair amount of range because that bottom side, the left side, is staying put. So when the right side moves around that, we create some diagonals and some spirals. So bringing the elbow down just looking for ways to pull the slack out of the body so you can see kind of the rotation with the hip and and shoulder there's that other front of the shoulder stretch I might as well do while we're there opening up the front side carrying the stretch deeper into the internal abd abdominal muscles Getting into the psoas, getting hip flexors opened up there. So again, the idea is it's a, it's a pretty simple movement. Um, it's a very broad spectrum approach. It's kind of my go-to for if my ribs or thoracic spine are really anywhere in my spine. If I'm just feeling tight or kind of stuck in my spine, this is my favorite simple, non-specific stretch because I'll just get a whole bunch of stuff at once. And then if there's anything left after that, you might need to be more specific. But this gets a whole bunch of stuff all at once and partly because it gets it all moving against each other, getting some nice coiling through the torso, getting the ribs open and mobilized. It's a slightly loaded stretch, and then we're moving with it, so it's a, it's a dynamic loaded stretch is the essence of the starfish. And you're, again, the idea is you, you create a line of tension, and then you roll that around the body. And so there's ways to, as you get to know it, things will open up. And so there'll be ways to make minor improvements and adjustments. But you keep looking for how do you wring out the body? How do we pull more slack out? And that often the key gets to be in those little rotations at the, the hips and shoulders for kind of those deeper layers. Using the bottom knee there to assist the stretch and that top hip. You can initiate the movement from one leg, 
from one hip, rotating it, flexion, extension, flexion, flexion and extension of the spines, one of the, one of the keys to unlocking the, the movement. So there's lots of little stretches in this, and each stretch could be isolated in its own thing, but by linking them all together, that's what gives you the systems diagnostic. That's what gives you the mental map of the tensions and pressures in your body. And comparing them side to side you know, fills in the details of those maps and just going over them little by little under a little bit of strain, pulling tension through there, a little bit of loading from gravity, pulling the limbs open, or depending on how you're doing it. It's fantastic neural feedback.